Hello, my name is Juan Bersiaga. By nature and training, I'm a physicist. I'm going to be talking about an education based on the liberal arts and sciences, but I'm actually going to try and answer another question. How do you prepare for a future that is unknown and uncertain? I attended a Catholic high school which stressed the breadth of education, a love of learning, and a sense of community. I found two other things in high school. One, I liked science, all the sciences, but especially physics. And two, I read a book. The book was by Gilbert Hyatt. In the book, he stressed that there were two ways to educate our minds. One is to be introduced to great ideas, great problems, and the other is to be introduced to great thinkers. Perhaps that's why I felt drawn to physics. Physics, like our friends in philosophy, introduces our students to the great problems. For my college degree, I attended a state school where I took more courses than I needed to in order to explore other fields. But I always kept coming back to physics. For me, physics was the most difficult, most challenging, most fun set of courses that I encountered. After four years, I couldn't stop. It was just too interesting. I attended a large research university for my PhD, but there were two elements that were in the best tradition of the liberal arts. One was the expectation of excellence. We were expected to be the best that we could be all the time. The second was that the university had an honor code. We do not lie, cheat, or steal, nor tolerate those who do. Though I had attended Catholic schools, there, the expectation of honesty and integrity was a personal and private charge. The university's honor code was embraced by the entire academic community. Intellectual growth and expertise is only part of a liberal education. Another vital element is the examination and growth of values rooted in ethics, morality, and for some, spirituality. Students in liberal education are given the opportunity to develop standards for intellectual honesty and integrity, for discipline and self-sacrifice, for responsibility to others, and for courage. Physics, like our friends in the other STEM disciplines, mirror these values in the science community. Our students learn intellectual honesty when they commit to the work, produce their best effort, acknowledge what is their work and the work of others, and admit the limits of their understanding. They learn courage as they tackle unknown problems and accept failure as the cost of advancing knowledge. But as I was completing my PhD, I decided to look for a professional home. I liked teaching physics, I liked research in physics, but I also liked working with students, helping them learn physics. And so I decided to look into the liberal arts uh, school. You find there's no single authoritative statement for the liberal education. There are many. And so I looked for those that I felt most strongly about. This is by Louis Lemur, a writer who did not even attend college. His statement, I would say it should offer breadth of view, ease of understanding, tolerance for others, and a background from which the mind can explore in any direction is very nice because it reminds us that a liberal arts education is supposed to expand your perspective. Another statement, let us dare to read, think, speak, and write by John Adams. I like this because it focuses on the basic tools of intellectual growth. It also carries the sense that Subjecting things to a thoughtful analysis is difficult, challenging, and possibly dangerous. From the book, Teaching as a Subversive Activity, once you have learned how to ask questions, relevant and appropriate and substantial questions, then you have learned to learn. And no one can keep you from learning whatever you want or need to know. This is slightly subversive. I like it. And so, 
Uh, there are many other descriptions of a liberal education. Hannah Holborn Gray, former president of the University of Chicago here at Bowdoin not too long ago, described a liberal education as one that frees the mind of unexamined assumptions and opinions, promotes independent thinking and critical judgment, develops a capacity for complexity and ambiguity, and opens the mind to the opinion, uh, many opinions. There are many other descriptions of liberal education, including Bowdoin's own very eloquent offer of the college. I have always maintained that uh, the liberal in the word in the phrase liberal arts and sciences describes both arts and sciences. And certainly Physics has contributed many ideas that have changed how we view the universe, of how we view ourselves within the universe. And um, when you talk about the universe, a very common question is, where is the center of the universe? And by this, people usually mean, are we the center of the universe? And in today's world, when we have discovered the expansion of the universe, the Big Bang, the um, it's a dark matter and dark energy, we're still being asked this same question. There are many ways to answer this question, with reservations and provisions, with a cautious interpretation of the, um, of the question and an admission to uh, the limits of what we know, but the way I like to answer this question is, yes, we are. But, but so is every other point in the universe. And this can certainly expand your perspective. And like our friends in uh, the humanities, we have found it useful to have our students learn another language. One that expands their vocabulary and allows them to apply the precision of the elegance and beauty of its grammar. But what about the content of the arts and sciences? Are the content of the M so separate? I am reminded uh, of a quote by Albert Einstein, but first I have to admit that the uh, arts and sciences do offer different content, different perspectives, different forms of analysis and communication, and different standards of evidence. But, as Albert Einstein once said, the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the source of all true art and science. And so, uh, the question then is, how do we build an education based on the liberal arts and science? I am reminded of a story I heard at Colorado College. This concerns how General Palmer, its founder, would go and solicit funds for, uh, the, to establish the college. The way he would uh, ask for money is he would give a pitch something like this. If you give me $10,000, I will build a dormitory where the students can live and work together, where they can argue, debate, cooperate, and compete. If you give me a second $10,000, then I'll build a library where the students can learn and study. And if you give me a third $10,000, I will hire some faculty. I like this because it allows us to see three facets of any education, but in particular of a liberal education. First, there is peer learning. This is the learning you pursue in cooperation and competition with your friends and peers. And here, competition refers back 
to its roots, meaning to strive together. But peer education does not only occur in the group work associated with courses. Rather, it occurs in the talks and discussions you have with your friends and peers about ideas and values, about courses, programs, and activities. This is where you learn to be part of a group and to be a leader, when to follow and when to oppose the group. Second, there is individual study. This is where you learn to learn on your own, using books and notes, the library and the internet. You do whatever is necessary to learn. Hopefully, you will also learn to weave information into knowledge and eventually knowledge into wisdom. This is where you test yourself in order to find your potential and your limits. And the third facet is the learning you take under the guidance of faculty. Each faculty member has solved a problem, created an argument, created an expression that no one has ever done before. Each faculty member is an expert in the study of a discipline. Yes, the faculty here are here as your mentors, but they're also here as, your, as models of scholarly thinking, expression, and community. The idea of uh, the liberal arts is uh, one of the things that has puzzled me about the liberal arts is that uh, a lot of people think that it is, has no practical value, that it is for an elite that need not work. And yet, and yet, the liberal arts has always focused on the uh, education, the background, the knowledge that engaged citizenship requires. The roots of liberal uh, education traces back to classical Greece, where the primary uh, goal of the education was to promote engaged citizenship. In a sense, the uh, science mirrors this in the way it prepares students. By the time students finish their education, they have breadth and depth of education. They have an aptitude for solving problems. They can exp uh, communicate in mathematics, uh, uh, word and visual representations. They can work alone or in groups. They have learned the value of evidence-based thinking they can deal with problems that are complex, ambiguous, ambiguous, and tightly integrated. And they feel a um, comfort with complexity and ambiguity. And so this is what makes the physics student uh, very able to work in diverse fields and to be a citizen to our democracy. One of the things that we find is that the, phys the faculty at liberal arts colleges are primarily designers. We design learning environments. We balance challenge and support balance time to reflect, and the need to be productive. There is an expectation that the end of college is the end of your education. That is not true or accurate. At best, the end of, educa uh, the end of your college is the end of the beginning of your education. You're going to have to keep learning new ideas, new values, new techniques, in order to answer the question, no, perhaps not. 
Ah, well. In order to answer the question, what kind of world do we want to live in? What kind of world should we live in? And what kind of world will our children live in? My very best hope for our physics students is that when confronted with a problem they have never seen, they still know what to do. In a sense, the liberal arts education is our best effort to produce an education that prepares you for a future that is unknown, ambiguous, and complex. Ah, is physics the most fundamental of the liberal arts? There are many ways to answer this question. With reservations, provisions, with a cautious interpretation, and a reminder of the limits of our knowledge. But the way I like to answer it is, yes, yes it is. But so is every other discipline that we teach. Thank you.